Hello everybody, it's Tanner Fishies here, back again with a new Ninjaga video here on the channel. In today's video, we are going to be breaking down the elemental power of wind, and we're going to be discussing why this certain elemental power has kind of proven itself to be one of the most confusing elemental powers throughout the entirety of Ninjaga's history and lore. So in order to break down this elemental power, we're going to have to go back to the earlier days of Ninjago. I want to go through the history of Ninjago's elemental power of wind and discuss a couple of things, notably where it came from, where it was used most recently, recently, and where we might see it again in the future of Ninjago. As I'm sure a lot of you guys have been made aware, there is a very large rumor right now in the Ninjago community that a new Windmaster might appear at some point throughout Ninjago's future, and we'll get more into that later on in this video, but I just wanted to go ahead and clarify that the reason why I'm making this video right now is because of all the history and context that we received during Seabound, this might actually become possible. We might actually see a new Windmaster at some point in Ninjago's future, and I've already done a couple of videos regarding that. However, the point is, we need to understand where Wind came from and what exactly the elemental power of wind is all about before we get introduced to a new master. Now, like I said, the elemental power of wind is very confusing in the context of Ninjago, and in order to go ahead and understand its history, we need to go back, like I said, all the way to the earlier days of Ninjago. Now, of course, following the end of Seabound, it was revealed to us that Wajira, the giant sea serpent, actually was in possession of two elemental powers, wind being one of them and water being the other one. Obviously, both of these powers were very crucial to the future of Ninjago, but at this current moment in time, they belonged to Wajira. The first Spinjitsu master did not create these two powers, nor did he receive them from somebody else. Instead, he was facing off against these two elemental powers. They were controlled by amulets in Wajira's forehead, which basically balanced her power. Now, it was very much confirmed during Seabound that the wave amulet was obviously holding the properties of water, while the storm amulet might have been controlling the properties of wind. That is one property that does kind of make this elemental power confusing, is the storm amulet amulet a representation of Wajira's wind power. It seems to be. Both amulets kind of work together to create a storm, but is the storm amulet actually represented by wind? I mean, it's certainly not represented by lightning, as Wajira did not have control over that power, but considering how the wave amulet is represented by water, I think it's safe to say that the storm amulet is kind of representative of wind, unless of course there was something else in Ninjago's lore that I'm not fully getting right now. Like I said earlier, wind and water are not elements of the first Spinjitsu Master. They belonged to to Wajira, but still, the power was somehow passed down to future elemental masters. The first elemental master of water, Niad, obviously had a physical embodiment of water and was able to pass it down through the generations, so like I said, I think it's safe to say that there might have been an elemental master of wind to go along with Niad, the first elemental master of water, unless the first Spinjitsu master obtained the wind element on his own and just simply passed it down the bloodline as follows, thus beginning its descent from elemental master to elemental master. Following the history of Wajira, it's somehow made its way all the way to Moro, who of course was the first elemental master of wind that we know of. Obviously there were several elemental masters of wind beforehand, but Moro was pretty much the first big one that we saw in the series. The very first, I guess, main user of wind was Moro. Before we discuss what Moro did with the power of wind and how it actually affected him and how he actually used it effectively, we need to take a look at wind's relationship with other elemental powers. If you guys remember during season 4, Master Chen was trying to organize all of the elements into to one place so he could control basically all of them. He wanted to collect every single element in his staff in order to turn himself and his entire army into anachondri. Now there has been some confusion regarding certain elemental powers and why they weren't needed for Chen's spell. For example, wind, water, and time were not required to complete the spell despite being elemental powers. Obviously with Wajira holding the powers of wind and water, it would make sense because obviously they're powers of Wajira. They're not real elements in the context of the first Spinjitsu Master. Instead, they are both powers of Wajira, but still passed through the generations as normal elemental powers. And also for time really quick, it would make sense that time wasn't needed, because time itself did not exist within the current timeline, as the time blades were kind of thrown into a vortex, and the power of time was simply not present in Ninjago at that time. Also, I think it's worth mentioning that wind and lightning are not connected. I know there's been some confusion in Ninjago regarding lightning and whether or not it's actually represented by the storm amulet, or whether or not lightning and wind are connected. This mainly comes from a scene during season one where Jay uses wind instead of lightning. Now obviously this scene was from way before wind was even going to be introduced, and it was later confirmed by Tommy Andreessen to be a simple mistake. In case you guys don't know, Tommy Andreessen is one of the co-creators of Ninjago, so when he says that Jay using wind was a mistake, I think it's safe to say that he's right regarding that. So in the context of wind being related to other elemental powers, it was not needed for Chen's spell, and it has nothing to do with lightning. 
Going back to the first Elemental Master of Wind that we saw on screen, Morrow. He actually used it during Season 5, as it was revealed that he himself was a descendant of one of the Elemental Masters of Wind. Not super clear who his ancestor was, but we just know that he received the power through a natural genetic bloodline. Now, he was obviously trained by Wu, but ultimately got banished to the Cursed Realm. We all know the story. He came back, and Morrow was kind of destroyed, and he was destroyed even further when the Cursed Realm collapsed due to Nia unlocking her true potential at that time, but Elemental powers do not die. That was also confirmed by Tommy Andreessen. As Moro had no descendants and no one to pass on his elemental power to, the wind element simply sought out a new host. This is something that we talked about on the channel before as well, but the elemental powers, like I said, they don't die. They don't go away. Even if there's not a natural descendant or somebody chosen to inherit the power by the current elemental master, as was the case with the elemental power of ice, it'll still seek out a new host. Now, obviously, we have a couple of different candidates for the wind element, and this is something that I've gone into in more detail in other Ninjago videos on this channel, but the popular names right now are Pixel, Antonia, Nelson, and some other characters. It could be pretty much anybody, at least someone who's not a current elemental master. As we saw with Zane, elemental powers can indeed be passed on to non-humans, so Pixel could easily obtain the power. Also, like I said, Antonia and Nelson are also some candidates that we should very much consider as being prime subjects for the wind elemental power. Either way, wind has found a new host, and whether or not it'll still awaken within that master is up for debate. Another option is whether or not Moro actually has a descendant. If Moro has a legitimate descendant, then the wind element would not be able to seek out a new host, as it would just naturally progress to that descendant. However, it's very likely that Moro does not have any living descendants, as he was never shown to be in a position to have descendants, if you get what I'm saying. It's not likely, but it's also not impossible. Moro could still very well have a descendant out there somewhere that could very much take up the mantle of wind. If we're being honest, I'm quite surprised that the wind elemental power was not utilized that much during Seabound. Honestly, with that being said, I feel like water was very much the prime focus of that season, but wind is still as important to Wajira as water was. I feel like if water was actually explored in this way, we could very well see wind explored in this way as well. Maybe we'll see that in a future Ninjago story, because like I said, wind desperately needs some type of attention brought to it. It is very confusing as an elemental power, it's very different from other powers that we've seen so far, and as such, so is water but at least water actually had some explanation to it. It's not super clear to me and other Ninjago fans how Wajira actually used the power of wind. We know that she did indeed have control over it, and wind along with water are simply not elements of the first Spinjutsu Master, but still, it is very awkward that we have context for water, but not so much for wind. Was there an original Master of Wind? Was that the first Spinjutsu Master? Did he just choose somebody to obtain the wind power, or was there a Niad figure for the wind element? All of that remains to be seen, but I I sincerely hope that we actually do get some type of reference towards Wind's history in the future of Ninjago. In the meantime, that's basically all we know regarding the Wind element. It's very confusing, a very non-linear path for sure, but I do feel like we will definitely see a future Wind Master at some point throughout Ninjago, whether or not it's Pixel, Antonia, Little Nelson, or maybe even somebody else. Either way, the Wind element will indeed continue onwards. I am very much counting on that to be true. Whether or not we'll see that, though, anytime soon is up for debate. And that'll pretty much do it for my thoughts about the elemental power of wind. Like I said, kind of a messy element by default, but let me know down below in the comments if you have any theories that might fill in the gaps a little bit in the timeline of the elemental power of wind. Where do you think wind went after Wajira's initial defeat? Did she still have it? If so, how could somebody like Moro have it? Leave all your thoughts down below, guys. That'll pretty much do it for this one here. Admittedly, I do have kind of a headache after going through the entire history of wind because, like I said, it is quite messy. But feel free to leave all your own theories and thoughts down below, and if there's anything that I missed, feel free to let me know down below in the comments as well. Thank you very much for checking out today's video. That'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and check out the links down below in the description for other forms of social media. As always, big shout out goes out to my Patreon supporters, including once again the Marvelous Jan. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video once again. My name is Tanner Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell.